Natural ways of cloning. If I could clone myself, I would make three of me. I figured out in order to function properly, you know, in my house and everything, I need three of me to take care of all the bits and pieces of housework. And they would all follow my instructions. But I am pretty stubborn, and they'd be identical, so maybe we'd be fighting about whose instructions are the best. Anyways, there are natural ways of cloning, and one of them is identical twins. So if you've heard of identical twins, there are lots of identical twins out there. Genetically, they should be the same. Therefore, they are a clone. The word twin comes from the Greek word for twig. Haha. <laughs> Cloning used to refer to plants only. So there you go. Next time you see a pair of identical twins, you can tell them that story about how they really originate from plants. Plants have many cloning methods as well too. Garlic, for example, garlic bulbs with their leaves that are growing, the groups of bulbs, they are all the same. So they're technically clones of each other. Strawberry plants actually grow something like this underground. These plantlets, these runners can go across and then another plant pops up. So underneath, they're actually related to each other. They're actually related to each other. So this is technically a clone of this plant. You can cut right here and they'd be two separate plants identical clones. So another example, this particular type of organism, uh, not necessarily a microorganism here, but this organism called a animal hydra, called a hydra, which is a cool name for a bad guy team. I think this is, am I making this up? GI Joe. Anyways, here's Hydra. You see this little budding that's coming off here? It's basically budding off. Uh, budding just means a part of the cytoplasm and membrane, the plasma membrane kind of stretch a little bit and then form a little bump and that bump can actually break off and then turn into a new organism. So that's what's happening here. This is technically a clone as well too. And then in the animal kingdom with some bigger animals and insects, there are quite a few examples of parthenogenesis. And I didn't put that word here. It's not a word that you need to know in the syllabus. But the idea here is that some females of the species can actually give birth to diploid egg cells without the requirement of sperm or without the requirement of other genetic information from a male organism of the species. So if female aphids right here, if female aphids give birth to diploid egg cells, all of the genetic information came from the mom. Therefore, all the genetic information is the same as the mom. And so that would be considered a clone as well. So there you go. You can do some crazy in the lab, cool, scary, reproductive type Star Wars cloning, but you can also do pretty natural cloning. So it helps with some of the ethical arguments, I guess, a little bit. Don't you wish you had a twin?